Hey there. So before diving into this week's actual uh, focal topic on uh, bootstrapping, what I want to do is step back and think about the big picture of where we've been and where we're going and how it fits in to the general ideas of, of data analysis and statistical modeling. Um, so the general goal of statistical modeling is, is to fit models to data. So we have uh, some data we're, that we're analyzing. We want to understand the general patterns. Remember, we make we, we write down models so that we can improve our understanding and we can make predictions. But we need those uh, models to be calibrated to data. And so the first thing we need to do is to be able to fit those models to data. That's kind of our first goal. Uh, but we can't just stop at that goal because the other thing we need, there's a number of steps we need to do, and we're gonna lay out kind of a general outline of what those steps are for any analysis and then how we do them. <clears throat> so in the general sense, after we fit a model, uh, we then need to ask a question about how much confidence we can place in the parameters of those models. Because just fitting the models gives us back a, a single best estimate of those parameters, <clears throat> but not how much confidence to put in them. And that estimate of how much confidence that we put into the parameters in our model is really central to the goal of hypothesis testing. So if our goal is to understand a process, uh, we often have uh, questions that could be expressed in terms of hypotheses about the parameters in models, such as, you know, is this slope different than zero? If this slope isn't different than zero, then the thing that it's associated with might not be affecting the system, or, or is this you know intercept different than zero? Or you know these questions, uh, our hypotheses about systems are, are very often expressed mathematically in terms of uh, these questions related to parameter uncertainty and, and how confident we are that the parameters in our model are different than some null expectation. <clears throat> uh, Next, we have this question about model uncertainty. So if we take all the uncertainty in the model and uncertainty in the parameters and we put it together with all our other uncertainties, such as residuals and inputs and stuff like that, um, we, we need to have that accounting of uncertainty if we're going to make predictions. So if we're trying to make a prediction, if, you know, if we think about putting a confidence interval or a predictive interval around our model, to do that, we don't need to know just the parameter uncertainties by themselves, we need to translate those parameter uncertainties into uncertainties around the model as a whole. So that's our second, I guess right now our third goal. Um, and then our, our final goal uh, in statistical modeling is to assess the quality of the model. This is kind of the, the goal here is validation. So we go through this, this process of assessing the model, uh, sometimes in sample, hopefully also, always in sample, hopefully also out of sample, uh, seeing how well the model actually performs, looking for violations of the assumptions we've made. So regardless of what those assumptions are, whether they're a normal error or some other error model or linearity or some nonlinearity, we still need to assess whether the model actually describes the data that we have. So we started the course in thinking about these steps uh, from the perspective of linear models. And linear models, again, that's going to cover regression, uh, polynomials, quadratics, multiple regression, interaction terms, uh, ANOVAs, like all the stuff we did in the beginning. Basically, everything that LM will do for us uh, is part of linear models. But if we think about LM by itself, it's it's actually doing two of these steps automatically. It's, it's doing the fitting. It's returning us our best estimate of our intercept and slopes and other parameters. Uh, but it's also giving us back uh, the standard errors of those parameters. It's giving us that uncertainty of the parameters. And it's that uncertainty in the parameters that's used to perform our hypothesis test. When we make predictions with linear models, we can use that, do that using the predict function. It's very handy. You put in what came out of your linear model, the new data you want to make a prediction for, what interval you want to make it, and it makes that prediction. Um, and not just putting intervals around uh, lines, we can make new data that might explore new scenarios or predict us into new situations. And then the, the other thing that R has done that's handy for us is 
uh, for model assessment as this handy feature that if you take the linear model object and pass it, pass it to the plot function, you get a lot of diagnostic figures automatically. So pattern, looking at your residuals, you're looking at your assumption of constant variance, you're looking at the assumption that you fit the normal distribution or whatever distribution you've assumed. Um, and this is great when you're working in linear models, uh, but the question that we've now kind of transitioned to is how do we do that more generally? So what is really the general solution to how we bring models and data together? So what we covered last week was kind of the general solution for how we fit models to data, uh, which was maximum likelihood estimation. So we have to be able to write down a likelihood and then we need to be able to optimize that analytically or numerically. And that gives us our best estimate of the parameters. And that's, that's where LM came from, but it's also where uh, any other more complex models come from. And you know, as you explore more complex models, you can see that that's where they were derived from, but you can also see that uh, ultimately, if you have a model that's different than uh, one that you've got a, you know, a pre-made tool for, maximum likelihood will always let us fit models. Uh, but it only gives us that best estimate. So we also need ways of doing these other steps. So we need ways of estimating the uncertainty in the parameters, ways of estimating uncertainty in the models, and ways of doing model assessment. Uh, and I actually would say that we've kind of talked, we had a whole lecture on model assessment that was meant to be more broad uh, than just uh, LM. So we've kind of talked about some of that already. So what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks is how we deal with these uncertainties in the parameters in the models. So this week, we're going to focus specifically on parameter uncertainty and introduce a technique called bootstrapping. And actually, one of the things that I want to emphasize for this whole general solutions category is we're going to really put a lot of focus on uh, what, what we call numerical methods, methods that are usually implemented by code. Uh, they're very general, they're very flexible, and uh, they can often be done without uh, any reference to having to go through any specific analytical derivation. So while we can do maximum likelihood analytically, in practice, we do a lot of it by numerical optimization. And we just need to be able to write our model as a function. Bootstrapping is similar. We're going to go through numerical methods that are very general, they're very flexible. We can apply them in almost every situation uh, that rely on, on computation to solve our problem for us. Uh, and actually, we'll introduce a class of solutions, computational solutions called uh, Monte Carlo algorithms. Uh, we will also rely on Monte Carlo alg algorithms to do our propagation of model uncertainty, to put a predictive interval or a confidence interval around a model more general, or just to make, to put uncertainty estimates around more model predictions in general. And then as I mentioned uh, earlier, we already kind of talked about model assessment. And this is where we, we, instead of having a handy function that does it all for us, we'll often have to resort to getting creative and making plots our, by ourselves. So that's where things like using predicted observed plots as a, a standard kind of workhorse for model assessment, looking at plots, other sorts of plots of our residuals, manually generating Q, Q plots, summary statistics, things like that. Um, so that's the general big picture. And, and kind of, I, I like this framework as we go through uh, these different things, maximum likelihood, bootstrap, Monte Carlo, et cetera. I think it's really important to see this big picture of how they go together and not just look at these things in isolation. And particularly to be thinking about how the things that come out of one step will, will be the things that are, are feeding into the next step. So these are algorithms that are really end up very tightly coupled. So what our end goal uh, is not just a, a, a familiarity with a set of tools, but also to see the overall workflow that puts those tools together to actually allow us to do uh, analyses in the general case. Thanks.